So now that we've talked a little bit about how we tend to compare our culture to other cultures around the world, let's look more closely at some terms and concepts that will help us uh, use some sociological sources and information to provide some context to these things that we're talking about. So oftentimes when we get confronted with some custom or value or belief system that is different than what our own culture value customer belief is we experience some sense of kind of shock or disorientation and we refer to this as culture shock so for example when you just heard about this experience of uh, people from uh, Scandinavian countries who may leave their young children outside in strollers or baby carriages while they go into restaurants, you might have felt a sense of like disbelief or something that challenged an understanding of a belief or a value that you had. That would be an experience of culture shock, right? So like I said, a common response uh, for us in the United States, if we saw a couple or a person leave an unattended baby outside would be, oh my gosh, that woman left her baby outside. What's going on? Right. So that's what we experience when you've experienced a sense of disorientation or disbelief because you're presented with a value, custom or belief that is different than one that you have. You experience what's called culture shock. Right. Uh, now, the tendency of using our own groups or our own society's way of doing things is kind of a yardstick or this measurement for which we evaluate or judge all other cultural practices is called ethnocentrism. OK. Ethnocentrism is bad. We don't like it. It shouldn't be a thing that we practice. We shouldn't be comparing our own way of life as being superior or uh, better than any other cultural practice, any other way of life, you know, in general. Of course, there are some behaviors that are inherently good and bad, you know, killing people, generally not a good thing any way you put it. But it's important for us to try at least to understand the context of behaviors, even behaviors, practices, values, beliefs, etc. that inherently we go, oh my gosh, how could any society think that it's okay to do something like that? As sociologists, again, we're never going to default to making assumptions or generalizations about people without taking a second to put on our sociological imaginations, ride up in our hot air balloons, and try and understand what's going on from a different perspective, right? So this is what we want to fight against, is this concept of ethnocentrism, this tendency to constantly be evaluating other cultures in comparison to our own, and thinking that everything about our culture, everything about our society, our practices, our values, our way of life, is better than everyone else. So whenever something deviates from what we consider to be normal as part of our own culture, we automatically label it as being bad or wrong or inferior. And that's what ethnocentrism is. And it's not a great way to go about living in the world that we live in because when we result to ethnocentric tendencies, we have a very, very limited view of how this world actually is and how people in this world actually operate. We should strive to understand other cultures from their perspective rather than our own is really what we should be doing. So an ethnocentric tendency would be to view a person who left their child outside of a shop in a baby carriage by saying something like that woman left her baby alone outside in New York City. What an awful mother, right? Making judgments on an individual's parenting or on an individual's character based off of a practice simply because this is a cultural practice that is not something we are familiar with, right? We're evaluating other people and assigning other people worth based off of how we think their practices differ from what our cultural practices are. So again, ethnocentrism, bad news bears. We don't want it. We should strive for more cultural relativism in our society, especially here in the United States. So to overcome our ethnocentric, ethnocentric tendencies of valuing our way of life over everyone else's way of life, we should strive to practice what's called cultural relativism, which is understanding and respecting diversities of cultures from their own terms, from their own perspectives, rather than just defaulting to constantly comparing it to our own and then automatically assuming that since it's not what we do here in the United States, that it's bad or that it's less than, right? So cultural relativism is really about adopting a sociological imagination when we're talking about culture. Right. Instead of automatically judging other people, other customs, other values for being different because it's not something we're familiar with and then therefore assuming that it's bad, cultural relativism inquires us to 
put on our sociological imaginations to understand how people from different places, from different regions that grew up in different societies all have different cultural practices. And instead of just comparing them to our own and considering them bad because they're different from our own, we should approach them from this understanding of curiosity and saying, wow, this is a different cultural practice that I'm not familiar with, but just because I'm not familiar with it doesn't make it bad or weird or wrong. It just makes it different than my own cultural practice, right? So a cultural relativist approach towards seeing a person leaving a baby outside of a restaurant in the United States uh, would be to, you know, inquire, go up and ask the person, hey, you know, I noticed that you left your baby outside here. That's not something we typically do in the United States. Uh, can you explain to me what's going on? And then maybe to discover that in Scandinavia, this is a common practice, right? So a, a cultural relativist understanding of this practice would be to say something along the lines of, wow, that woman said it's acceptable for parents in Denmark to leave their babies outside of restaurants and shops. How interesting. Now, does that mean that we should encourage people to start leaving babies outside in the United States? Probably not, because as the mother indicated uh, from Denmark in that one example we looked at, in other countries around the world, there's this kind of cultural value of people looking out for one another and taking care of one another, even if they're strangers. And in the U.S., we don't really have that cultural practice. It's kind of an individualistic society that we live in, you know? We don't feel a sense of responsibility for looking out for strangers' children in public in the same context that maybe some Scandinavian countries do. So it's not to say that we should encourage these different practices, right? In fact, sometimes if we uh, enter into a different society or a different country and follow and engage in our own cultural practices without adapting to the culture of the society that we're in, in we can put ourselves in harm's way, right? A good example of this is that um, you know, if you, for example, women in a lot of Middle Eastern countries, right, even if you're a woman from the United States, it might be considered very disrespectful for a woman from the U.S. to go into a Middle Eastern country and not to, you know, cover portions of her body, you know, to wear really revealing clothing, because in Middle Eastern cultures, women are expected to do that. So we need to be cognizant and aware of different cultures. And again, the goal here is to just not view cultural differences through this, through this lens of ethnocentrism, ethnocentricism, excuse me, while we're evaluating other cultures as being worse than or inferior to our own, we should be striving to approach different cultures with a sense of cultural relativism, approaching them from this sense of curiosity and trying to understand how different groups, different societies establish different systems of practices, values, and norms that doesn't make them bad or worse than ours. It just makes them different and that's okay, right? So think about this in your own experiences. For those of you, for example, who have traveled to maybe a different country or even just a different state or a different region in the U.S., can you ever think of a time when you traveled somewhere and hung out with a group of new people and experienced culture shock? You know, what's something you've experienced where a practice or a value is very different than what you've been exposed to in your own culture? And how did you respond? You know, consider this. Now, I have a great example. Uh, when I was in high school, I uh, had the opportunity to travel to Mexico uh, as kind of like a third Spanish class and stay with a host family for a week or two um, just so I could get more experience speaking uh, Spanish and living in a culture that, you know, that uh, actually practices Spanish language as the original language. And so as soon as I got there, you know, I didn't speak great Spanish whatsoever. Um, and my host mother that I was staying with really didn't speak any English. So we kind of had this struggle communicating. And I remember one of the first experiences of culture shock that I had there was after she picked me up, um, one of the first things we did was drive to a grocery store to pick up some groceries. And she was driving really fast, kind of bobbing in and out of traffic, kind of, you know, using her horn a lot, beeping a lot while she was driving. And I'm so kind of sitting there like grabbing what I call the oh shit handle on the passenger seat, seat, you know, just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die in my first day here. And we get to a stoplight and I think she could kind of sense my like stressed look that I probably had on my face. And my host mother in, in her, the little English that she spoke, she said, in America, no beep beep. But here, beep, beep. And so I was like, okay. It was one of those first instances where I realized 
that this is just a different cultural practice. You know, they drove a little differently in this large Mexican city that I was staying in than in my small hometown of in North Dakota, where we had a population of 150 people, right? So it was culture shock. It was a different custom, a different practice that I had never been exposed to before. And it disoriented me a little bit because I had never experienced it. Now, instead of just being judgmental and saying, wow, people here just drive cr like maniacs. This is crazy. How do they do this? I tried to just accept that it was a different way of life, a different cultural practice, and a different shared understanding. So I'm sure all of you can think and reflect on your own experiences that you may have had where you've been exposed to a different group of people or a different society, and maybe felt a little bit disoriented learning about their practices. But it's really important, again, from a sociological perspective, that instead of automatically labeling different practices or values as being bad or weird or having a negative connotation, just to respect the reality that cultures everywhere are different and no culture is necessarily inherently better or worse or uh, smarter or less smart than another one. It's just differences in societies produce different systems of values and behaviors. So this also feeds into the concept of cultural imperialism. So while appreciating one's own culture can be healthy and produce a sense of community, uh, perhaps by incorporating a sense of solidarity, if we think back to Emil Durkheim, right, and functionalism, you know, so structural functionalism says that in order for society to function well, people need to feel like they're connected to one another, that they have the sense of social solidarity, that they're kind of buying into this collective consciousness. So supporting your own culture, you know, and appreciating your own cultural customs can be good and functional for a society. However, if we buy into that too much, right? If we start viewing our own cultural as being so superior to everything else, it can result in a lot of ethnocentrism, which as we talked about before, can result in having this dislike or devaluation of people from other cultures. And this can create a sense of conflict, right? So that would be a conflict theorist argument. If we start to value our own culture so much that we build up our own society as being the best the best and only way of living or of thinking and doing things, it causes this sense of tension, right? We start to value our own way of life so much that we devalue other ways of life. And it creates these, can result in creating these unequal dis systems of distribution of power that privilege some societies and cultures and marginalize or oppress other cultures around the world. Sometimes even people with good intentions may plan a trip to another country or another society to quote unquote help out that other society or culture because they think that the people seem poor, uneducated, or essentially inferior. So this is a great example of how ethnocentrism can result in this sense of conflict between cultures or societies. Um, in fact, it's become so common that it's even started to be dubbed a few different names in sociological conversations. For example, the white savior complex or the Santa Claus, Claus, Claus complex, you know, uh, a lot of colleges and universities oftentimes over spring break will plan what they call these, you know, uh, trips or these opportunities for students to travel to countries that are labeled as being, you know, quote unquote, impoverished or uncivilized. So white people can go in and help them build houses or build schools or in some way, shape or form you know, contribute to these other societies that we as a society have determined are in need of help. Now, whether or not all of these programs are inherently good or bad isn't really up for us to say, but the important thing to consider here is that travelers on these trips are oftentimes guilty of this practice called cultural imperialism, which is the intentional imposition of one's own culture on to another culture, right? So if your intention on going on one of these mission trips or whatever they're labeled as through your, you know, church or through your school, whatever organization is to go there to teach these quote unquote uncivilized people how to be more, for example, American, that's cultural imperialism. Instead of respecting the reality that these different societies, even if they don't use the same technologies or infrastructure that we use in the United States, have their own way of living. They've survived thousands of years on their own and that what they're doing, while it's very different in some ways than how we live in the United States, it works for them. It's their culture. It's their way of being, a way of living. Imagine how you would feel if all of a sudden some other country 
uh, anywhere around the world came to the United States and decided that they were going to dominate us and tell us how we need to start living and tell us that the way that we're living right now is completely wrong. It's not right. They could be doing things so much better if they would just follow different 